everyone, it's Sarah, and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to crochet a rainbow bandana that will work for any size dog, cat, or pet. It's stitched in these different colors to form the rainbow, or you can use a striping yarn, and I'll show you that just a little bit later. I've added a little button that looks like a puppy. Now keep in mind, if your dog is a chewer, you may want to skip adding a button. Just make sure it's sewed on tightly and it's not going to be the size that can choke your dog. That's up to you if you want to add that little button or not. You can find this free crochet pattern on my blog and as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make your rainbow bandana, you're going to need some yarn, of course, and this one is stitched using medium weight number four acrylic yarns. You can use cotton if you prefer, just make sure it's a medium weight number four. You can make it using different colors and changing colors every few rows, like this one, or you can use a striping yarn. And for today's demonstration, I'm going to be using this Red Heart Super Saver striping yarn. It's called Favorite Stripes, and it has a beautiful rainbow colorway. I'm also going to use this white for the trim. You can change colors, or you can use a striping yarn. Just make sure that it's a medium number four weight yarn, and you need maybe two and a half to three ounces total. You're going to need a dog collar because this bandana, you slide the collar right on it, and you don't have to worry about it coming off their neck. And of course, it's just decorative, and it slides right on top of their existing collar. And I'll explain to you how to adjust the band when we get a little farther on in the video. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You need a button if you want to add a button onto your bandana. And these are just some cute puppy buttons that I found at Hobby Lobby. We'll need a needle to weave in our ends and sew on our button. And then of course you'll need your scissors. We're going to be starting at the band of the bandana up at the top. And the pattern is written for about a 10 to 12 inch dog neck. If you want to make the band at the top wider across, you can do that by adding more chains. Three chains equal about an inch. And so that can give you an idea if you want to make your band a little bit wider. And of course, I'll explain that as we go along. For the pattern as written, we're going to be chaining 21 chains. So we'll begin with our slip knot and chain 21 chains. I have chained my 21 chains. And remember, if you want the top to be wider, you can add more chains if you like. We're going to begin by placing a half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through all three of those loops. And now we're going to place a half double crochet in each chain across. And this is the same no matter if you added more chains or not, you'll still place one half double crochet in each of the chains across. You're going to have 19 half double crochets. We are not counting those first chains as a stitch. So you'll have 19 half double crochets, chain one and turn. And then for the next row, the chain one does not count as a stitch. We'll stitch a half double crochet in each of the half double crochets across.
I've completed that second row. And again, you'll have 19 half double crochets across. We're going to chain one and turn. And then we're going to repeat row two two more times. Chain one, we turn one half double crochet in each of the half double crochets across for two more rows. I've stitched two more rows of the half double crochet. And this is our band. And before we go any farther, you need to bring out the collar that you're going to be using and fold this over and make sure that it's going to fit. Mine's going to be just a little bit of a snug fit, so I'm going to add another row. And if you have an even wider collar, you can do a row or two or three or four if needed in order for us to fold this so that the band can slide right inside. All right, so I'm going to do one more row so that my band of my collar fits nicely and smoothly through the band of my bandana. So I'm just going to repeat what we've been doing for one more row. I've completed that one more row of half double crochets. I'm going to go ahead and chain one, but again, I'm going to make sure that my band of my collar is going to fit smoothly through, and it is, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to fold the band in half, and we're going to stitch across it with single crochets, all right? So we'll go in the first stitch on this side and the first stitch on this side and stitch a single crochet. And we'll do this all the way across, forming that band for our collar to slide through nice and smoothly. You don't want it to be a tight fit. You want it to be able to slide it on and slide it off. You can, if you prefer, to use a piece of cording or maybe a ribbon and slide it through there. Since it is just a decorative collar, you can do that as well. Or you can make a long chain and put that through and tie it on with a bow. I just like being able to slide it onto my collar if I want to. But those are some options that you can do for your collar. So I'm almost to the end, making sure I have all my stitches in place. And you may notice that it curls just a little bit. Don't worry about that. It's not going to hurt a thing. And that curl will come out as we stitch across. All right, so now I've formed the little tuber band that my collar is going to slide right in so I can slide it right onto my collar. Now we're going to begin forming the bandana portion of our bandana. Now if you're changing colors every couple of rows and I decided to go ahead and change colors because there's a lot more blue and I want my bandana to have a rainbow effect. And so what you do is you take your new color and you bring it in and you pull it through, and then you do your chain one. Whoops. Got to keep that snug down. There we go. Now, if you're going to do a chain one, chain two, chain three, you're going to want to do all of that after your color change, or you end up with a color from your previous row on that row. All right, so I did a chain three and turn. And what we're going to do for this row is we're just going to place one double crochet in each of those stitches, those single crochet stitches that we added. We are switching to double crochets for the remainder of our bandana. So one double crochet in each of those single crochets across.
I've completed that row of one double crochet and each double crochet across, and you should have 19 double crochets. We're only going to chain one and turn. And what we're going to be doing now in order to form the point of our bandana was we're going to be decreasing at the beginning and end of each row. So we'll yarn over, go in the first stitch and pull up a loop. Then we'll go in the next double crochet and pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook instead of three. Yarn over, go through the first three, yarn over and go through the second two. That's our stitching two double crochets together or double crochet decrease. Now we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets across until we reach those last two double crochets. Now, if you're changing colors every two rows, I really advise you to do it all on one side. Here we changed colors. If you're going to change colors again on this row, do it on this side. That way, when we come back in and put our trim on, after we weave those ends in, we can stitch over all those edges with our white yarn with our trim or for our trim. All right, let's see one more. All right, so now I have two stitches left. Yarn over, go in the next stitch and pull up a loop. Then I'll go in that last stitch and pull up a loop. Again, I have four loops on my hook. Yarn over, go through the first three. Yarn over and go through the last two. Now I'm not gonna change colors right now, but if I was going to change colors, I would do it at this end. I'm going to chain one and turn. And what we're going to continue to do for the remainder of our bandana, no matter what size you're making, even if you made it wider, you're going to continue to decrease at the beginning and end of each row until it decreases down to two double crochets. So I'll do my double crochet decrease or stitching two double crochets together. It means the same thing one double crochet in each double crochet across. Now I'm to my last two stitches. There we go. And we'll stitch the last two stitches together in a double crochet decrease, chain one and turn. I've got a little tangle there that I need to deal with, but this is how you'll continue to decrease. And so what you'll do is you'll continue to decrease at the beginning and end of each row Changing colors every two rows if you're changing colors, although I'm using a striping yarn. And you'll continue to do that until you've decreased down. I have continued to decrease until I have three double crochets. I decreased at the beginning and end of each row. And I have decreased until I have three double crochets. So I'm going to turn. We're going to stitch a decrease with the first two double crochets. Then we'll just stitch one double crochet in that last stitch and tie off. And if you have some ends that you need to weave in, you want to go ahead and do that now. 
I'm going to weave in my ends and then I'll show you how to add that white trim. I have tidied up my bandana and you can decide which side you want to be the front or the back. It doesn't really matter. I want my purple on the front up here. And so I'm going to do that. And we're going to take our crochet hook over here on the left side at the top of row five. We're going to join in our white. And we're just going to stitch single crochets evenly down the side. Now we don't want to put them on the band because that will close up our band. We want to leave our band open so we can slide our dog collar through there. So we're just going to evenly stitch white down the side of our bandana, trying to work in the stitches and not the holes and you just have to eyeball it. There isn't any set number of stitches when you're evenly stitching down the side of something that you're stitching down the sides of the stitches. And when you're doing something that's kind of at an angle like this, it can be a little bit more challenging. Just take your time and eyeball it. You can also use a black yarn here if you want to. That will really make the colors pop. There we go. Now we're coming down to the point. There we go. And when we get to that point, we want to stitch three single crochets right in the end. So one, two, and three. And that's going to make the point of our bandana nice and pointed and help it move around to the other side nice and neatly. So now we're going to evenly single crochet up this side of our bandana, trying to stitch our stitches in the sides of the stitches and not the holes. And again, there is no set number of stitches that you need. It just needs to look pretty and even. So I'll continue working up this side until I reach row five and I'll tie off there. I've evenly stitched up the side. I'm at R5, and so I'm going to cut my yarn and weave in my ends. Now, we want to make this have a smooth transition. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in, we're going to pull that loop to the back, and tie off back there. Then we can weave that in in the back. Now, over here, we want to have a smooth transition also. And so what we'll do is we'll thread that tail of our yarn on our needle and we'll go right in there so it lays nice and smooth and then we'll weave that into the back. Alrighty. Now I, I still need to tidy up this side and then I'll show you how to add that button. Now I've already slid my dog collar through my bandana and the best way to do that is to put a safety pin, a nice big one, on the end of your dog collar and then just slide it through. And mine has not, it was nice and roomy so it slid through nice and gently. Alright, so we're going to sew the button on. Now remember, if your dog is a chewer and doesn't like buttons or whatever, you don't want them to choke on this. So don't put a button on it for the safety of your dog if it is a chewer. Same thing with cats or other pets. Now, what I do when I sew a button onto something that's crochet is I first go through a couple of the top of stitches in the center and I make a little loop. Then I'll put that string to the back because I'm going to tie with that one. All right. Now this button goes sideways, so that works good. If it was the other way, I'd have to do, of course, my stitches the other way. And then I'll go right through those stitches. It's real important when you add a button to anything crocheted that you go through stitches and not holes, or you could lose that button through a hole. All right. 
and we don't want that to happen. And then you can make as many stitches as you think is needed for your dog. And they uh, do have little cat buttons and lots of other fun buttons, even rainbows, at Hobby Lobby. Now, I know they're um, over in the scrapbooking section is where the best buttons are. I don't know why. They have a few buttons over in the fabric, but the best and fun buttons are over in the scrapbooking section. All right, so I tied the knot and I clipped the, the yarn and now my bandana has a cute little puppy on the front. Here are the two bandanas. This one is for Maximo. I changed colors every two rows so that it has the perfect rainbow effect. This one is for Rosie and I used the color changing striping yarn. And so you can use either way. And of course, like I said, you can use acrylic, you can use cotton, whatever yarns, whatever colors that you want to use, as long as it's a medium number four weight yarn. And it's super easy to adjust wider for bigger pets. <music>